Hey guys, it's Miss Andrea. I'm back for another lesson. We're going to continue our study in Mark. Um, this is our 13th lesson, and the title of this week's lesson is The Greatest. Now, I don't know about you guys, but recently through social media and different outlets, they've talked about the goat. And at first, I didn't know what that meant. And I even had to do a little research because Miss Andrea is getting kind of old. And I learned that it meant the greatest of all time. So I got to thinking about, you know, the greatest of all time for what? When I was in middle school, Michael Jordan was playing for the Chicago Bulls. He's considered the greatest of all time for basketball. Um, being a St. Louis native and fan of the Cardinals, I think a lot about Yadier Molina. Yachty, greatest of all time when it comes to catchers. Um, we can think about singers, songwriters, actors and actresses. We can easily make that connection of who is the greatest at whatever their talent or skill. But we often overlook those small things. The greatest at serving the greatest at sharing, being generous, showing compassion. And while I say small, small meaning it doesn't get a lot of publicity. It doesn't get noticed. It doesn't get everybody's attention. But really and truly, these are probably the most important of all of these skills and talents. And so we want to think and focus about Jesus as the greatest human to ever walk the earth. Now, we understand that Jesus was the son of God. And so what he was God in the human form. Okay. But we know he was the greatest at so many things. And so we're going to focus in the book of Mark. And we're going to get some examples of how he was the greatest. Okay. So we're going to start off um, in Mark chapter 12. He starts out in verse 1 by sharing a parable. And if you remember, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. That means that Jesus is telling a story that can relate to the people to where they live, how they function, what they do day to day. But it actually has a very deep message. So in this very beginning, in, in chapter 12, Jesus starts talking about a parable. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower, leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get them some fruit from the vineyard. And they took him, beat him, and they sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent them another servant, and they struck him on the head, treated him shamefully. And the man sent another servant, and they killed him. All of these things keep happening. You remember, this is the story that Jesus is sharing. Finally, he said, I'm going to send my son. They will respect my son. But those tenants, those workers, they said to one another, this is the heir. Let's kill him. Everything will be ours. So they took him, they killed him, and they threw him out of the vineyard. And what did the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. You see, Jesus was telling a parable to these people. Remember, it's an earthly story, but it has a heavenly meaning. A lot of times in Scripture, Jesus would have to explain the parables. Not this one. This parable mirrors what was going to happen with Jesus. God kept sending prophets, warning the people, you need to follow my commandments. You need to do what God has said. And they would hurt these people, kill these people. So God sent his son, 
just like this parable. And just like the parable, the people killed Jesus. He didn't have to explain. They knew exactly what it meant. Another example of Jesus being the greatest was a question that asked um, about paying taxes to Caesar. So the Pharisees and the Herodians, they were wanting to trap Jesus. They were wanting to find a way to fault him, to, to maybe kind of take sides. So they asked him, okay, we know that you're true and you don't care about people's opinions. Um, so is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? They thought they were going to trick Jesus. If he answered yes, they had a response. If he answered no, they had a response. But instead, Jesus said, bring me a coin. Bring me that money. He looked at it and he said, whose likeness and inscription is on it? That means whose picture, whose, whose image is on that coin? And they said, Caesar's. So Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. The greatest of all time. Jesus knew what these people were trying to do to him. He could have reacted in so many different ways, but instead he focused on showing them and teaching them through stories. And he was able to demonstrate his love and understanding of God. They knew that Jesus was going to give a new answer. And like I said, they were prepared for whatever his answer. But they weren't prepared for that. We're going to continue in Mark 12. And we're going to look at another example of how Jesus was the greatest. If we skip down to verse 28, we get to another conversation where people are challenging Jesus again. And they ask him, which commandment is the most important of all? Again, Jesus answers them in a way that they don't really expect. And it shows how great he is and his understanding for his purpose and God's love for his people. And he responds and says, the most important is hero Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There are no commandments greater than these. There couldn't have been a better answer. Love God with everything you are. And love others. That's the greatest commandment from the greatest human to walk on earth. Another example of sharing this greatness with others. Jesus was warning people, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at feasts. He was saying to them, it's not about you being the greatest. It's about elevating others and understanding that God is the greatest. One of my favorite examples in the Bible is this in verse 41, where we talk about the widow's offering. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and he watched people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, okay? They got lots of money, so they can donate lots of money. They're real big and important, right? But this poor widow came, and she put in two small copper coins. Those two small coins only equaled a penny. 
Now you think about what you can buy with a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him and he said, truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those others. She gave all that she had and they gave out of their abundance. They have a lot so they can give a lot. She had almost nothing but she gave all of it. That to me is one of the greatest examples. And Jesus was making a point. She was giving more than anyone else because it was all she had. Time and time again, Jesus is questioned. He's challenged. They're trying to find something where they can fault him to say he can't be the son of God. All the stuff he's been teaching and preaching, it is not accurate. They're trying to find something wrong. And over and over and over, Jesus is able to show he truly is the greatest. In our world today, we have people, some who recognize Jesus as the Christ. They recognize his power, his love, and, and what comes from knowing Jesus. And then we have some that don't. You have to stop and think, who are you? Where are you at? Are you living for Jesus? Are you committing to the greatest person there ever was? Or are you just living for another day? So stop and think about that. What are you doing every day to show that there is no one greater than Jesus? Let your light shine, share your love, share everything that you have with others so that they can learn more about Christ. Y'all have a great week, and we'll see you again next week.